How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This is volume 10 where we look at ozone and catalytic decomposition within topic 14.1, higher level bonding. Let's go. Okay, volume 10, ozone and catalytic decomposition. We look at the energy required to catalyze the ozone reaction and then we look at CFCs and NOxs as catalysts to decompose ozone. So basically we need to explain the wavelength of light required to dissociate oxygen and ozone and then we need to know the mechanism for the catalytic decomposition of ozone. Now ozone has two possible Lewis or electron dot structures and you don't need to remember them, you can simply work them out by using this little trick. Work out the number of electrons in the molecule. So in this case we have 6 times 3 which is 18. Divide it by 2 which means we have 9 electron pairs. Then what we need to do is we need to connect up our three oxygen molecules. So there must be an oxygen in the middle and then a bond to the other two oxygens. And then we need to remember the rule that oxygen will want to form an octet and have eight electrons in the outer shell. So we need to put our other lone pairs of electrons around the oxygen atoms to form eight electrons in each oxygen's outer shell. And we can do that using the structure shown below which can exist as a resonance structure. The double bond between the oxygens on the right hand side could then move to the oxygen on the left hand side and it forms what we call a resonance structure. So we say that those electrons in those two bonds are delocalized because they can move from oxygen to oxygen. Either of those electron dot diagrams is correct and if you put one of those down you wouldn't be marked incorrect but it is a resonance structure. So if we were asked to draw the exact structure of ozone, we need to include the fact that it's got a, a lone pair of electrons on the central oxygen atom, which is gonna make this molecule slightly bent. Now its resonance structure will have, instead of having a double bond and a single bond, it will have a dotted line indicating that it has resonance between those two bonds. So the dotted line implies that the electrons can move between those two locations. Now is ozone a polar molecule? And can we explain this using the concept of formal charge which we touched on in the last video? So here we have our diagram for ozone. In this case, I'm gonna draw in one with the double bond and one with the single bond. And then what we need to do is go through and calculate the formal charge on each of the oxygen atoms. So the formal charge on the oxygen atom here will be the number of bonding electrons, six, take away half, the number of electrons in the outer shell, take away a half times the number of bonding electrons plus the number of lone, lone electrons, gives me a formal charge of zero. I can calculate the other formal charges in the same way, and then I need to look at the overall distribution of the formal charges. So the oxygen with the single bond is minus one, and the oxygen at the top will have a formal charge of plus one. Now what does this mean for it being polar? Well, the formal charge for this molecule is not distrib distributed symmetrically. So it's an asymmetrical distribution of the formal charge. That means that this molecule will be polar. It's only slightly polar, but it is a polar molecule. So the fact that that charge, that formal charge is not distributed symmetrically means that ozone will carry a charge and it will be slightly polar. And the dipoles in this case will not cancel out, which means that it is a polar molecule. So ozone and oxygen dissociation is caused by specific electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation in the atmosphere. Here's our two diagrams, our ozone and our oxygen. Now if we look at the bond order, the bond order just indicates how, how many bonds we have between each of the atoms. So here we have with the oxygen, a non-polar molecule, two oxygens with a double bond between them. The ozone has three bonds between two oxygen atoms, two other oxygen atoms. So it has a two locations, sorry. So it has a bond order of 1.5. The oxygen has two bonds with one bond location. So it has an order of two. So the oxygen has a stronger bond order. Now oxygen dissociation produces two oxygen radicals. So we have our O2 gas, which forms two oxygen radicals. Remember an oxygen radical has a lone electron. So that's why it's got the dot. And that 
bond enthalpy or the energy required to break that bond is 498 kilojoules per mole. Now that is a wavelength of light of approximately two, less than 242 nanometers. So that means it needs quite a energetic light to break that bond. Ozone dissociation occurs in two steps. Firstly, the ozone breaks down into an oxygen radical and then oxygen gas. And then that oxygen radical is able to react with another ozone molecule to form two, oxy two oxygen molecules. So we've got breakdown of ozone. The bond enthalpy for breaking the bond in ozone is 364 kilojoules per mole. It's less than the energy required to break the bonds in O2. So then we have an energy that is slightly, slightly less than the energy required for the oxygen. So the oxygen molecule has a shorter wavelength, which means it needs more energy to break the O to O double bond than it does to break the 1.5 bond order of the bonds in ozone. Now, ozone depletion is catalyzed by CFCs and oxides of nitrogen, and we need to know the mechanism. So nitrogen monoxide, NO, is produced at high temperatures in a combustion engine, and it is a free radical. NO2 is another free radical that is produced in the process, and it also catalyzes the decomposition of ozone. So here we have our nitrogen monoxide radical, and it can react with ozone to form the nitrogen dioxide radical plus O2. And then what happens is that NO2 radical will go on and react with another ozone molecule. Sorry, the NO2 will react with a, an oxygen radical to produce our nitrogen monoxide radical, which we get back, plus an oxygen gas. Now the overall reaction here is if we, if we look at what is produced and consumed, we can actually do some cancelling to see what the overall reaction is. So NO radicals are on both sides and NO2 radicals are on both sides as well. So we can cancel those out. They're both produced and consumed. So what's left over is our overall equation. And we can see that our overall equation is just the decomposition of ozone, which we actually wrote back a couple of slides ago. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the NO radical has acted as a catalyst. It's both consumed and produced. So overall, there's no net loss or gain of nitrogen monoxide. That means it's acted as a catalyst in the process to decompose the O3 into oxygen. So the more NO we have in the atmosphere, the, the higher the chance of O3 decomposing into O2. CFCs were widely used in aerosol solvents and refrigerants, and what they do is they release chlorine radicals that also help to decompose ozone. So Freon undergoes photochemical composition, which releases a chlorine radical. So we have C, Cl2, F2, and what happens here is a chlorine radical is released and that chlorine radical is what undergoes the catalytic decomposition of ozone. Now the reason why the chlorine is released is the CCl bond is weaker than the CF bond. So it has a lower en bond enthalpy so it's easier to break. Once we've formed that chlorine radical it can react with ozone to produce O2 gas and a ClO radical. That ClO radical can go on to react with another oxygen radical to form O2 gas and Cl, another Cl radical. Now overall, again, if we do some cancelling out here, we can see that the overall process will just be the decomposition of ozone and it will be the same as the reaction above. So again, Cl has acted as a catalyst because it has been both consumed and produced in the process. And if we do our cancelling, we can see that the two reactions are actually the same. All right, volume 10, some top tips. Remember, more energy equals stronger bond with which equals a lower wavelength of light. And you need to remember the mechanisms for the decomposition. They're pretty much recall and the questions will be pretty straightforward. So try and remember those. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.